I want to talk today about having a bias against yourself, about essentially having a bunch of information in your mind that you know is useful from relevant sources and feeling like you are not allowed to give the information out. I am going to be the first person that tells you, listen, if you figured something else out about the world that people need to know, put it out there. Period. Put it out there. And give credit to the people that you gave got that information from. If we don't do that, right, and we hold ourselves as somehow higher than other people, if we don't give out that value to people in society, then in my opinion, how can we die happy? Right? How, how can we spend our days actually being satisfied based on the things that we're doing? Now, it takes a lot to get to that point. To say to yourself, hey, you know, you need to, you need to be okay with giving out information that you haven't actualized yet. Right? You've got to be pretty cocky to do that. My argument is that if you got this information from your mentors, if you got this information from people that actually use this information, to become what they are, what you respect. And you are translating it word for word to those other people, though you may not have done it yourself. I say you're doing a service to society. Because not only personally are you associating yourself with the ideologies of those strong, powerful people that you want to be like, but you're also saying, listen, I'm humble enough to know that this information is going to be valuable someone to use it. So I had a conversation. By the way, my name is Tarab. I make uh, videos about emotional intelligence every day. I'm a business owner. I am an investor. I'm a philosopher. Um, and I talk about things hopefully to help you actualize your potential and really do the things that you want to do in life. With the tools that the powerful people in life use to get to their level. I had a conversation with someone on Instagram Live. One of my first supporters, actually, Fizz. Shout out to Fizz. He has a virtual reality company that he uses to uh, help businesses educate their employees and users on how their services work. Incredible human being. And I had the opportunity, and I have this opportunity in, in private a lot. To, to actually have a conversation with people and provide them with valuable things and things that I've learned, right? Things that I'm trying to implement into my business in order to make the wealth and the uh, the prowess that I want to Robify to have, the positive effect on society that I want to Robify to have. And so I had this conversation on Instagram Live, and I kind of had this uh, this bias against myself where I was thinking, you know, Rob, you haven't. You haven't utilized these tools yet in order to make that money, or you haven't utilized these tools yet to get those leads. And I think to myself afterwards, I'm like, well, you know, are you being, are you being ethically stupid? <laughs> are you being foolish giving this information out, having not used it? So I had to, I had to go back and put the logic in. But I basically gave advice on how to think with our, he said the right side of the brain, I'm not sure if that's the case, but think with the part of our brain that's more logical. Think with a part of our brain that's more business-sided, number-oriented. Because I believe a lot of the people watching this channel are going to be more creative individuals, creative souls, people that start businesses, people that have creative hobbies and, and like looking at the world in almost a chaotic way. I'm one of those people. And that's why I started educating myself on finances significantly over the last eight months. Because I was like, well, all of my goals, all of my missions in life require me to go and talk to the most amount of people to have the biggest effect. And the only way to have that effect is to have the finances together, the raw power to go and put that information out. So I had to think a lot and I, I, had to, I had to go and invest in myself. I had to go invest in courses that are necessary to understand that. I had to go and find the people and, and augment my environment in a way that, and I still do this, that would allow me to think in that way. 
and I got a lot of information, a lot of information, and, and it's hard to use all the information right then. I believe, I genuinely believe, and I had, I heard a uh, a podcast. Adam Grant and uh, Andrew Huberman were talking together. There's a there's a latent period of us dwelling on information subconsciously that is required in order to actually use that information. That's me paraphrasing what they said. I hope that's that's at least what I understood from their, their podcast. But I believe that we pick up information and we have to genuinely let that sit in our in our subconscious, vaguely thinking about it, using our our perception of the world to think about instances where we can use that information in order to actually get to the point where that information becomes relevant and genuinely useful in our life. So what, I'm, what I mean to say is if you read a book and it has a lot of like character assessment things that it talks about, or it has a lot of personal growth things that it talks about, to assume that we're going to immediately implement that thing, I think is a little short-sighted. Now, I'm not saying that just, you know, just read the thing for the sake of reading the thing and say that you read it. But I'm saying that some of the deeper messages that come from that book, that resource, are necessarily going to require some time to implement into your life. And that doesn't mean that you shouldn't pass on the knowledge prior to that implementation. Because frankly, if it's true, if it's, if it's something that you're thinking about, something that you value, then someone else is going to value that information. It's going to help someone else. Right? Live a life of service, period. So it's something I've been thinking about recently, because there's a lot of information that, that powerful people take in, that risk takers like yourself take in. There's plenty of information that we're going to have to consume and synthesize and, and discover if it works and discover how exactly to manipulate things in our own life to utilize the information best. But I don't want you going into a networking situation, going into a situation with people that have achieved what you want to achieve in life and think of yourself as somehow an outsider in that scenario. Because many of them started off the same way that you and I have started off or, or are progressing or, or are at that point in their life. Like it's just the change in conception that really matters. I want. I watched a lot of anime growing up, and for those of you that watch anime in your life, you know, for, for better or worse, hopefully, hopefully you're not spending too much time, wasting time watching that, but One Piece is one of those things, and there's this thing in One Piece called hockey. Hockey is willpower. Literally, it's willpower. And willpower is every human being's superpower, genuinely. If you have will, if you have the will to do something, you will go past any obstacle in your life. Look at single mothers. Look at people that are single-handedly starting businesses, people that are immigrants, people that swam across the ocean, like, period, willpower, period, willpower. So that, to me, is very, very, very important to have. When, when good, kind people with positive goals for society, with big messages to spread, with big things to do, we need to have that willpower. And how we build that up is a belief in ourselves, really. It's genuinely a belief in ourselves. And it's a persistent, almost putting out this kind of, this energy, this aura that you are hyper confident in your ability that you are hyper aware of what you're capable of doing and what you will do as a byproduct of that. In One Piece, the way that Luffy, the, the king of the, I don't know if he becomes the king of the pirates, I didn't, I didn't finish the show, but the way that he projects this aura is he says, I'm going to be king of the pirates. I'm going to be king of the pirates. Like he says that as a, as a nub that doesn't have the power to take out the big boys, that doesn't have the power to compete. But he knows he has the hockey, the, the conqueror's hockey, they call it, to, to go and pursue that, to genuinely believe that in his life. So I think, I think when, we, when we feel like we're outsiders in a field, when we feel like we're, that our advice, that our, 
that the knowledge we have is not substantial because we haven't used it. I think it's a lack of willpower that's preventing us from using that knowledge, really. Hopefully this gives you something to think about in your life. Um, it's a tremendous, it's one of those things in life that kind of breaks down the walls around around your thinking, that breaks down the, the discrepancies that you may have came across in your life. Willpower, straight up. But you need to have something you believe in. So, so don't hide what knowledge you have because you haven't necessarily used it. Spread it to the point where people are questioning you. To the point where they question whether or not what you're saying is true. Because then you question yourself. Even though that should be the first step. Then you question yourself. Is this knowledge relevant? Is this knowledge actually useful to someone? And why is that the case? Hopefully this gives you something to think about. Uh, if you have a second, there's a video right here. Check it out. This talks more about consistency. Another essential part of building up willpower in your life. But really actualize your potential catalyst. This world genuinely needs you. Take care.